Well, hi everyone. Today I've got a special treat for you. Some of the most viewed videos on this channel have had to do with Three Gorges Dam in China. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, Value Space has been providing me analysis of data sets for various projects of interest that I've had that I've covered on this channel. And they have provided some analysis for a data set for Three Gorges Dam. So again, I really appreciate their working with me on these videos uh, to bring you independent satellite-based data and analysis. As you know, it's extremely difficult to get reliable information about the condition of major projects, particularly Three Gorges Dam in China due to its strategic significance. Also, the Chinese uh, government in particular seems to whip up a lot of national sentiment and a lot of national pride relative to these types of projects. So they would be extremely reluctant to admit that there would be any kind of problems or difficulties with these projects. So it's up to the outside world to keep tabs on what's going on if, if there's gonna be any reliable information disseminated. So I'll put a link in the description if you wanna learn more about value space. I'm just gonna cover a couple of quick things about it. I don't wanna go into all the details because I've covered that in previous videos. So value space works with the Sentinel-1 and 2 data collected by the European Space Agency. This is satellite-based radar that scans the surface of the Earth, and a given point on the Earth has a repeat pass every 12 days. So by analyzing the changes in surface elevation between passes, you could determine if there's likely to be areas of movement or concern for a variety of infrastructure projects or geological features, that sort of thing. So as a reminder, we're talking about Three Gorges Dam in China. It's on the Yangtze River. Here's an outline of the Yangtze River Basin. And uh, this is a controversial project for a variety of reasons. And it's in the news periodically for various reasons. But there's a lot of concern about not only how this dam is being operated, but what is its overall prognosis in terms of safety and performance going forward. I mean, again, there's not reliable information coming out of China on this dam and the impacts, if this thing were to fail, it would kill millions and millions of people downstream. So let's just take an example of one of these stories that shows up periodically about Three Gorges Dam. And there's been various postings about apparent displacement of the dam itself. And you see comparison photos. And the photo on the right apparently shows inflection points on the upstream face of the dam, which would suggest that these monolith sections are slipping relative to each other. But given the scale here, the, the dam would have failed if that happened. I did a previous video where I said I didn't believe that. Many of you clarified who are knowledgeable about satellite imagery said that was merely how the satellite images were stitched together from that particular platform, usually Google Earth. And so I I debunked it in the previous video. So I thought, let's look at the data that Value Space provided because it includes not only measuring points, but also includes a variety of satellite images from various sources that you can select for your analysis. So let's just run this here. I'm, I'm just clicking through different satellite sources here. And you can see that there appears to be an inflection point where I've got the red arrow. And we're just clicking through and then it disappears. But clearly that was an artifact of how those images were stitched together from that particular platform. So it's, it's interesting that you can look at that data independently and get a really good idea of what's going on, or in this case, not going on. Now, Google Earth has a nice 3D model of Three Gorges Dam. I'm just gonna play that here. It's really neat. Of course, this is a massive project. Just going around, flipping around the views, continuing around upstream side, reservoir side, so pretty cool. Now let's look at these data points that Value Space looked at for the area on or around the immediate vicinity of the dam itself. So let's just do a, a tour of the area. Green dots means no relative movement. So we're just gonna cruise around here. I mean, just in general, you get an overall impression that the dam's in good shape from a global stability standpoint. Obviously from a satellite perspective, we're not gonna get 
real detailed information about individual cracks or minor areas of distress or corrosion, that sort of thing. But when such problems get to the point where it starts to affect global stability, you can get an early indication of what could be going on using this NSAR data, which I think is fantastic. So let's look at a few individual areas that show something other than stable green data points. So we've got this area on the downstream side, right side of the dam. Looks to be some type of uh, building here. But we can see that overall it's stable, but we see these erratic points towards the end, particularly in blue. And uh, value space indicated that that is not an indication of true movement. Th there can be things that affect uh, the results of the NSAR. You don't want to put too much stock in just a few isolated points here and there, and there can be other causes. So it clearly requires people who are very experienced in doing this analysis, along with having knowledge of civil engineering and what goes on with these types of projects, what's, what's reasonable and what's not. And it's a good early indication or a good pass independently of what could be going on. And then if this was, say, a project in the U.S. and you were doing this for our client, you could point out, hey, we notice these areas. Does this correlate with anything that you've observed in the past or any concerns that you have or may have? So it's, it's a good mechanism as part of the toolbox to provide an overall assessment of your civil engineering assets. Now, one thing we notice with this plot, you can see the temperature plot, this uh, upper line. Of course, it's, it's hotter in the summer. And you can see the precipitation levels here, the, the blue bar graph at the base here. And so the summer's the warmest time of year. It's also the rainiest time of year. And so you can get these cycles where you have some small apparent movement, but it's just related to the changes in reservoir elevation, you know, up and down, up and down. And we see this pattern with Three Gorges Dam because the major purpose of this dam is generating hydroelectric power. So what they do is in... Early summer, they draw the reservoir down to its minimum pool, and then they let it fill so that going into the fall and winter, they're at maximum reservoir elevations so they can generate electricity over the winter. Now, this has been a source of controversy because oftentimes there's too much water in the reservoir to accommodate all of the flooding that occurs with the summer monsoon season. And if they had started with a much lower reservoir elevation, they'd have more room for flood control storage. So it's a constant uh, balancing act. And I use the word balance advisedly here because uh, this year here in 2024, the operators of Three Gorges Dam or the Chinese government in general created massive downstream flooding because of the flood water and just happened to release so much water through the dam so that there wouldn't be a safety issue. The last thing you want to have on any dam, particularly a dam like this, is overtopping, which could lead to failure pretty quickly. So let's look at a few areas that may be of a little interest here to us that didn't show unchanging ground elevations. So we've got this area left middle of the frame here. I'll circle it. So we got these points and there's a tool uh, that value space is provided to me, I have access to, where you can define an area to encompass some number of points, and then you can generate a plot of what that elevation data looks like for that area. And here we see some slight downhill movements, could be some minor surface movement of that slope, doesn't look to be anything of major concern. But again, if you were just getting an idea of, hey, what should I pay closer attention to on a project? What needs additional scrutiny or monitoring? And so this is an excellent tool to facilitate such analysis. Let's pick another point closer to the dam, just a little bit uh, downstream from the point we were at just now. And again, some slight downslope movement, nothing major, really nothing to be concerned with at this point, but something to keep an eye on. And we've got another area on the uh, other side of the reservoir. So we'll just zoom in on that. And again, some apparent downslope movement, but not uh, all that significant at this point. So 
why would I do a video telling everyone that based on the INSAR data, Three Gorges Dam looks great? Well, it's because I want to be transparent on this channel. I want to be data driven with my videos. You know, I've done a couple of videos already saying we don't know very much because you either have the government of China promoting nothing but a positive narrative, and then you've got groups who aren't fans of the government in China or their projects or how they run their projects and put out information that may or may not be accurate. In many cases, it's not accurate about the condition of the dam and, and what's going on. But there are clearly issues with this dam from an overall project standpoint. I did a search, internet search, and just as a reminder of what some of these key issues are, I'm just gonna go through it real quick. You know, there's been numerous landslides in the upstream reservoir area. The reservoir saturates the toe of many slopes along the, the rim of the reservoir. And then when you have drawdown of the reservoir, it creates a condition where you can quickly cause a slope failure. And then I've mentioned the flooding, the irregular water flow has caused uh, dams and levees to fail downstream during periods of high release from Three Gorges Dam. The sedimentation is a huge issue upstream of the dam. The sheer mass of the reservoir has triggered higher degree of seismicity, more earthquakes in that region. Of course, there's a lot of environmental impacts, habitat loss, water pollution, Millions of people were displaced after the completion of the dam uh, as a result of the flooding from the reservoir. And of course, many architectural and archeological sites were destroyed. So again, I think the, the takeaway here is overall Three Gorges Dam appears to be in good shape from a global stability standpoint. There's a few areas of concern that I would consider minor, but should be looked at. Who knows if they will or they're already looking at it. We can't, can't get much information out of them in China. But uh, the world is watching. I mean, there's more and more tools available to the private sector for whatever reason. If they want to look at a project in China where no information's coming out, you can do it. And uh, it's just tremendous how many tools are going to be available to private sector engineering interests, as well as individuals going forward. There's just more and more satellites being deployed with more capability. And I think the use of these satellite tools are really still in their infancy relative to civil engineering asset management. And also in terms of geological monitoring, I mean, I think tools like this could be great for looking at areas of magma intrusion, say in Iceland, to get an idea of the recurrence of eruptions, the recurrence interval. So again, I'm, I'm really excited about this tool. Uh, thanks again to Value Space pr for providing this data set. I really appreciate it. Also want to send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support as well as those of you who have provided super thanks. I'm going to roll credits here in just a second. I do want to mention uh, a book. Every time I talk about a book, it's a book that I've read. And uh, this book here is about Van Ever Bush, who was key in many government programs during World War II, including the Manhattan Project. He was uh, an inventor, a consummate engineer, very interesting person. So he was instrumental in coordinating academia and industry and the military to great effect to help the United States and their allies win World War II. So, I think it's, it's an excellent book. It's worth checking out. It shows you the complexities of scientific and engineering matters and how various programs are developed and maintained and how engineers and other technical people need to be part of the political and decision-making process in government. Because if you leave it to the non-experts exclusively, they're not going to know all the issues. They're not going to appreciate all the nuances and it just won't be as effective. So essentially he was responsible for creating the uh, military industrial complex for lack of a better term. So if you're interested in that book, I'll put a link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone. <laughs>